My name is Albert Jan. Most people call me Effie. I'm here with Jan. And we're going to do like two or three slides. We really wanted to do demos because that's why we're here. But let's start with, with one or two slides. Now, I think it all started with Jan. He's doing a lot with endpoint management, Intune really? stuff. And he came up with this really cool idea of having some sort of self-service experience around endpoint management. Endpoint management is the tool to manage your devices in your or your environment. And he tweeted about it, and I sent a reply saying, hey, you could do it with Power Apps. And we started having this discussion whether it would make sense to build a Power App for it. And we ended up building a solution. The reason that we built a solution is there is this whole plethora of research. Uh, we just picked one that apparently self-service is a good thing. If you provide self-service for your employees, they are more productive, they're happy, they experience a better digital workplace. So that was kind of the trigger for us to start thinking about, okay, can we build a solution where you have a self-service experience using the Power Platform, but also working with Endpoint Manager, because Endpoint Manager is the tool that we use to deploy stuff in our environment. And what we ended up building is the following interface. Jan will go through the demo, explain how everything works. But the idea behind this is that you as an end user could go to an application, that app is a Power App, and that it will actually help you to pick release preferences. So you could say, okay, just give me the company defaults, or maybe I want to be in a first release inside a ring. Maybe I want to be uh, a bit quicker than everyone else. Or maybe I want to be part of some pilot uh, programs where, for instance, uh, you see a lot of things happening in the security sphere. So maybe you want to get rid of your passwords and maybe you want to start using security keys. Maybe you want to use the Authenticator app if your company allows that. So we started playing around bit uh, with all these things. Okay, what can you do? Now, in the end, it is all pretty straightforward. What we have is we have a Power App. It's a Canvas app. The Canvas app can call a flow. The flow is doing some magic. Um, it actually calls the Graph API because we need to do some things in groups. So we use the Graph API for that. In order to do that, we do need an app registration. And in the end, all that is actually happening is putting users in Azure Active Directory groups because what we can do with endpoint management is use those Azure Active Directory groups to make sure that you have the parts that you uh, that you are looking for. So that were my three slides. Let's do demo. Jan, take it away. Thanks, Albert. Let me uh, share my screen. Well, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm kind of a new kid on the block on the Power Apps community. It's my first uh, Power Apps community call, um, but I'm happy to be here. So thanks for having me. And uh, I'm a, um, a Microsoft MVP, uh, but I'm awarded in the enterprise mobility stack. So I'm, I work mostly with identity and access management, Azure Active Directory and all those kind of things. But then I discovered Power Apps and Power Automate and Graph API. And, it opened up a world of opportunities for me uh, to well glue those beautiful things together. So that's why I, I and Appy uh, cr uh, created this uh, self-service portal app. And I'd like to to, to show you uh, how we done it and uh, where you can find all the materials to try this out yourself. Because what we try to do is to make this as simple as possible. Although it might look complex to some, some of you, it's really straightforward like uh, Albert already said. Um, so first, I want to point out there is a GitHub repository where you can find all the information on how to do this. It's basically a step-to-step -step tutorial on how to import this into your own environment and then modify it so it works for you as well. I dropped it in the chat there, so you, could, you, can, uh, you can find it's a pretty uh, brief explanation of what we've done and how it, uh, how it works. So here you can see an overview of the application. You can see who the owners are. So if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out uh, to uh, either one of us over over Twitter, for example. I also uh, created a little YouTube video for that, so where I explain from step to step what you can do to implement this in uh, in your environment. And then there is a requirements overview and a sort of architecture. So the slide of uh, Albert Jan already showed the components. Of course, we have a front end with Power Apps. In the back end, it's calling Power Automate. It's just one flow. We, we want, want to try to keep it very simple. That Power Automate does some magic. It calls the Graph API. It's built uh, upon an app registration for authentication and authorization. And what it basically does, it puts users in groups. And that's it. And, and there is where the, all the possibility starts. Because once you have a feature, whether that is in, in uh, SharePoint or in Azure Active Directory, and it involves an Azure AD group and you want to, to make people member of that group, you can use this Power App for that. 
So it got a bunch of information about the installation. It's here step by step, so you can go through it by yourself. But let me uh, show uh, what, what we've built. So fire up, fire up this uh, power app then for you. And there we go. So the, the, the first thing that we see is this is this slider here. And uh, like Albert already explained, this uh, can be used to, to integrate with Endpoint Manager. And for those who are not familiar with Endpoint Manager, it's basically what we call Intune. Maybe that uh, does ring a bell. And here we can um, create rings, and those are update rings. So what we can do is to attach those rings to specific groups. For example, we got here the, the company default ring, and you can see here that it's attached to a group called self service feature two. So that means when I go back to my Power App and I got this company default picked, that I'm a member of that group. If I want to move to the fast ring, what it basically does, if if I click save, oh, I read, I'm already in a fast group here, uh, so you can see. So if I, for example, want to the slow group, it will just uh, deletes me from the fast group and then adds me to the slow group. So for the front end, for the user, it's just a slider, which is really fancy. And um, to be honest, I didn't know how to build this. So uh, this was also a learning uh, experience for uh, for me. So I I started from scratch and then I, I uh, looked a bunch of YouTube videos and then I tried to figure out how this works. And so I tried to integrate it in this Power App. But all it does is just making uh, um, users member of groups. So here is the slider of three groups, and then we go on to the pilot programs, because in the, most of the projects that I do, um, we are working with new stuff. So passwordless uh, authentication is, is very new. So most of the times I uh, introduce pilots to the company, and um, all those pilots are mostly IT driven. So we got a bunch of IT folks, and they're all part of the pilot group, and, and they were all yelling, yeah, it works great. But then when you launch it to the business, and then the frontline workers need to work with that, it, uh, maybe it lacks adoption, for example. So you want to involve as much as people in those pilot programs. So what I created is here, and those, those are all examples. You can put anything in here to create simple toggles to just onboard yourself into uh, a pilot program. For example, password, uh, uh, get rid of your password using security key would um, allow you to register a security key so you can get rid of your password. And the same goes for, hey, I want to upgrade my device to Windows 11. We got a pilot for that. Well, just hit this toggle and then you will be onboarded to Windows 11. The uh, third and last section is about software, and I call this software on demand. So what you can do, we all got this software programs like Power BI Pro or Visio Plan 2 that are uh, limited available within the tenant. So for example, you got only 50 licenses of, of Visio, and you got a whole press process around that on, on how to request that. So uh, an employee needs to send an email or has to make a service request, and it, it will maybe last two or three days before you end up with this license. So what you can do here, you can integrate this, for example, with Microsoft Teams, fire up this Power App and then just hit the button. And you can also add a approval to this, for example, so that your manager needs to approve this. So this is the the the, the front end. So let's take a, take a look at the, um, at the flow then, because we use only one flow and it's basically uh, really simple. It, it got a bunch of uh, variables. Um, but you can have three actions. And um, depending on what uh, you choose, it will just add the users to the group, or it will remove users from the group, or it will fetch group membership, because we also want to know, hey, we added this user to the group. Is it, all, is it happening? So we fetch those information, and then we check, hey, this user is a member of the group, and then we report back to, to the Power App or Flow. So how does that look like? For example, I want to get a member of this group, it will just call the flow, add me to the group, after that fetching the group membership, and then it will show me, hey, you are added to this new self-service uh, group feature six, for example. So this is uh, basically straightforward, and um, I, I want to show you on the back end what, how to integrate this with your existing environment. So for example, here in Azure Active Directory, we got a security tab. And within the security tab, we got authentication methods. And here you can see what we have done. So for example, there is a method FIDO2 security keys, which you can enable for all your users. But instead of enabling it for all my users, I just enabled it for this specific uh, self-service group. So by 
just using this toggle, you can opt in and opt out of that specific feature, which allow you to um, uh, invite everybody uh, for your organization into this uh, pilot program. So I think that's about it. Uh, again, if you want to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how this works, reach out to this GitHub repository where you can also find the source files. One thing that I want to point out, I also uh, created a little add-on because if you want to act on these group memberships, for example, if a user is becoming a new member of a group, you can also use Graph API to get notified, for example, or you can send a welcome email to that user with all the information about the pilot program. So for example, if I hit this button, there's a new flow, and that is, that is the add-on that, that I was pointing to, that will recognize, hey, there's a new user added to that group, and then you can attach a new flow to that. Like I said, that example, send an email and provide extra information about this specific pilot group. So uh, that's it. I hope this was uh, informative to you. And uh, yeah, we, we wanted to inspire you to show you what the capability is to using Power Apps and the Power Platform together with uh, Azure Active Directory and the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So um, thank you all for watching. Nice job, guys. Really like how your app looks there too. I, I'm curious. So you said you're not coming from a Power App background and you built that app. How long did that take you? The Christmas holidays, uh, that's that, that as long as it took me. So I started from scratch. from scratch in yeah. a week or two? Yeah. We that's a two. real testament. That's cool. What was the hardest part to figure out for you guys? Was it, uh, I'm just curious. Well, um, I think every step was challenging. Um, if, if you if you get uh, going with Power Apps and Graph API, you, there's a lot of JSON involved and that was a hard part for me. So I was I was stuck for a bunch of nights and then I, uh, I put my laptop away and I, I was like, okay, I will figure it out in the morning and then it hit me and then I, I got further. So yeah, if you if you have to learn it from scratch, uh, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes, but it's so addictive that you, you keep trying to do it. Yeah. So. That's the fun it part. Is, so that really, it, yeah, it t totally. Because you can see like instant gratification when you build power apps, and most of the drag stuff in. It. Yeah, it's like oh, can't stop, can't stop. I know what you mean. Well, nice job, guys. That's awesome, and it's really cool that your whole sample is available right there on the internet right now. Wonderful documentation you have there too. Thank you. That's I always love when I go find a sample and it just tells me exactly how it works and everything. So. That's really cool. Uh, next time you guys build something awesome, come on back again and please share. We'd love to see it again. You have another one on your list right now? Something in mind? You're working I'm, I'm on working it? on it, but I can't tell uh, what it is, but it, it's, it's awesome. All right, sweet. Let me know. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, guys.